Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about checking for and exploiting the Heartbleed Open SSL exploit vulnerability. And though it's been a few years since this vulnerability terrified network administrators and cybersecurity professionals, it is still pervasive on the internet. There are plenty of servers that are running OpenSSL version 1.0.1 .1, all the way up to 1.0.1f. And these are the versions of OpenSSL that are vulnerable to the Heartbleed vulnerability. You can read more about the Heartbleed OpenSSL exploit vulnerability up inside of the lab file. And though the Heartbleed vulnerability may not be as pervasive as it once was, this material is still testable on some certification exams, such as the CompTIA Pen Test Plus. For this lab demonstration, I will be using one virtual install of Kali Linux, the latest version, updated and upgraded, and one virtual install of Seed Ubuntu 12.04. All links for any software or images that are needed to complete this lab are available up inside of the lab file, but it's very simple and very easy to go to the internet and get this downloaded image. It's just called Seed Ubuntu 12.04. Now once you get to the page, you're just going to scroll on down until you get to that image that we need for this particular lab, the Seed Ubuntu 12.04 VM. It's just a virtual machine that you're going to download. You're going to import it into VirtualBox, and you will have your target machine. So once you have downloaded the target machine, just open up your VirtualBox Manager, go to Machine, click on New, and you're going to give it a user-friendly name. You're going to select Linux as the type, and for the version, you're going to scroll on down until you come to Ubuntu 32-bit. And you're going to select the radio button to use an existing virtual hard disk. Now this is going to be the hard disk that you downloaded. You're going to click on the Browse button. And on the next screen for the hard disk selector, you're going to click on the Add button. And you're going to browse on over to where you saved that particular download. That download is going to be in the form of an archive. You're going to need to extract it. Once you have extracted the contents of that folder that you downloaded, you can then browse into the extracted folder, and you're going to click on that first option for seed Ubuntu 12.04, the VMDK file. Once you've done that, just go back on over to your hard disk selector screen and click on Choose, and now you can click on Create. Once you click on Create, it will begin the import process. Once the image has been imported into VirtualBox, you can then go ahead and launch your target machine. Once your target machine boots up, the password will be seed spelt backwards. So it's going to be D E E S all lowercase. Hit enter. Once you have a desktop, you're going to go on over to the quick launch menu on the left. You're going to scroll on down until you come to the terminal shortcut click on that inside of the terminal you're just going to type in ifconfig you're going to discover the IP address for your Ethernet adapter in this case my Ethernet adapter is ETH13 and my IP address is 192.68.56.126 this is my IP address yours may differ now the other thing that you have to ensure that you do for both your Kali and the target machine is you're going to go up to devices, you're going to go into network, and for your settings you need to ensure that your network is host only adapter. Now you may have more than one adapter to choose from. Make sure that you use the first adapter. That is the VirtualBox host only Ethernet adapter. That's the one you want to choose, and make sure you choose that adapter for both your Kali and for your target machine. Once you have that done, just click OK, 
and now you should be able to get the correct IP address. If you don't have the correct IP address, and it should be a 192, then just reboot the machine. That's all you have to do. Close this out. Click on over here. You can go to shutdown. And we can go to restart. And the target machine will come back up, and it will relearn the correct IP address from the VirtualBox DHCP server. So once you've done that, you can go into your Kali machine, and you can also ensure that its network type is set to host-only adapter. Once you have confirmed that both machines are up and on the same network, on your Kali machine, open up a terminal. And at the prompt, you're going to type in ping, and now you're going to ping the IP address of your target. And you should get back a number of positive responses. To break out of this sequence, you're just going to type in Control C. Go ahead and clear your prompt, and we're now ready to begin the lab. Now, there are a number of ways that we can confirm the presence of the Heartbleed of vulnerability on a server. And then we're going to look at three of those methods, starting with Nmap. So, Nmap has a script that we can run against a server to check to see if it is vulnerable for Heartbleed. So at the prompt, I've typed in nmap space dash sv space dash dash. And now I'm going to follow that up with script equals. And the name of that script is ssl dash heartbleed. Give that a space. And then I'm going to type in the IP address of the target machine. My target IP is 192.168.56.126. This is my IP address. Yours will differ. Now, once I have all that correctly typed into the terminal prompt, I'm just going to hit Enter. And this first message that pops up about there being an issue with DNS servers, you can ignore. And after just a short time, the script comes back and it tells us that SSL Heartbleed is a vulnerable and we see all that right here and you get some information about why it is vulnerable further down we get some information provided to us in the form of links that we can go and use to find out more information about heart bleed and under risk factor right here we are told that the risk factor is high, which means that there's a high probability that the machine that has the heart bleed vulnerability can easily be hacked. Let's go ahead and clear our screen. And at the prompt, we're going to type in MSF console. We're going to launch Metasploit. Hit enter. So not only can we detect heart bleed with Metasploit, we can also run an exploit against the infected machine using Metasploit. Now to do this, the first thing we have to do is we have to find a module up inside of Metasploit that we can use to detect and exploit this vulnerability. So at the prompt, I've typed in search space open SSL underscore heartbleed. Hit enter. And it comes back and there's only one module available to us. Now the easiest way to do this is just to grab the entire name of that module. Right click on it. Let's go ahead and copy our selection. We're going to go down here to the Metasploit prompt. We're going to type in the word use. Now I'm just going to right click and I'm going to paste that name for that module. Hit enter. And now we are inside the module. Let's go ahead and show options. And we see that we have a number of options that are available to us now. By default, this module is going to search using port 443. If there's a different port that your server is running SSL on, then you're going to have to designate that up inside of the R port configuration, which we see right here. Now, what we have to concern ourselves with, for the most part, is identifying the IP address for the remote host, which is right here. So at the prompt, I need to set the IP address for that remote host or target. And I do that by using the set command. So I type in set our host and the IP address of my target. 
and that is 192.168.56.126. I'll hit enter, and now the IP address for my target is set. Now the next thing that we can type in to see what is available to us up inside of this module is info. So I want to look at info, so I'm going to type in show info. And if you scroll up just a little bit here, you'll see that under actions we have three different options. We have dump, keys, and scan. So using this module, I'm not only able to scan for their vulnerability, I'm also able to dump the memory contents to loot, and I'm also able to dump the private keys that may be available up inside of the memory. So what we have to do now is do a scan. Now this scan here is just the vulnerability of scan itself. So I'm going to type in set, and I have to type in the word action. And now I have to type in what action I want to perform. Now what's interesting here is that this is case sensitive. So the word scan is all uppercase. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now I'm just going to type in the word run. And it comes back and it tells me that the machine is vulnerable for the heartbeat. You can see that right here. And it tells us that it leaked to us 65,535 bytes of information. Now the next action that we can perform is dump. So I'm just going to use my up arrow. And I'm going to bring up the set action scan. Back the scan off. And I'm going to type in the word dump. Again, all uppercase. And I'll hit enter. And I'll again launch this exploit by typing in run. And it comes back and it tells us that the memory was captured off of the machine, that is the target, and it was saved to the following location. If you would like to check out the contents of that bin file, you can use the strings command and the steps for how to access that bin file and view its contents are in the lab file. So the next action that we want to complete is going to be the keys action. So I'm going to use my up arrow and I'm going to change the set action from scan to keys all uppercase. I'm going to hit enter and I'm now going to type in run to execute. And there is our captured key. This is the private key for the SSL. You can close out this prompt. We're done here. Now the next method that we can use to check for the Heartbleed vulnerability on a server is using a script. So to get this script, we're going to have to go to the internet from our Kali machine. Now to do this, I'm going to have to go up here to Devices, and I'm going to have to click on Network, click on Network Settings, and I'm going to have to temporarily set my network type to NAT Network, just like that. I'll say OK. And now we can go over here to the application quick launch. I can open up a browser. Once I'm up inside the browser, you can use the URL I'm showing you up inside of the address bar for the browser. Just scroll on down just a little bit, and you'll see that there's a file called attack.py. You can go ahead and click on that. Over here on the next page, you're just going to click inside of that window with your mouse. You're going to hit a control A, then you're going to hit control C, and now you can minimize your browser. The next thing you want to do is open up a terminal. At the terminal prompt, you want to type in nano or whatever editor you want to use, and you're going to create a text file. My script is called attack.py. Just hit enter. Now, once you're inside of the editor, you're just going to right click inside of the blank window and you're going to paste the clipboard. That's going to put everything from that script inside of here. Now there's a couple things you need to read. One is we have to change the permissions of the script so that it will become executable. So that's the next thing you're going to have to do. Once you have the script configured or you have the script built, you need to save it. So you're going to go ahead and do a control X. You're going to type in Y to confirm you want to save the contents. And then you're going to hit enter to come back to the prompt. Now once you're back at the prompt, 
you can go ahead and change the permissions. So at the prompt, you're going to type in chmod space 775 space the location and the, the name of the file that you want to change the permissions on. In this case, it's located at the root, and I'm going to change the file permissions on a file that we just created called attack.py. Once you've done that, you just hit enter. Go ahead and minimize your terminal. You can close out your browser. Let's go to devices. Under devices, let's go to network. Let's go to network settings. And underneath our network settings, let's change our attach to from NAT network back to host only adapter. Click OK. Go ahead and bring back up your terminal. Now, once you're ready to launch the script, you have to tell it what program to use. In this case, Python. So we've typed in Python space period forward slash, which is the path, attack.py space the IP address of the target. Give it a space. Now we have to tell it what port that it's going to be looking for to check for the Heartbleed vulnerability. Now even though 443 is used by default, the script doesn't know this. It still needs to know what port you want to use. So we typed in dash P space 443. Hit enter. And it comes back and it tells you that this is a tool to test and exploit the TLS Heartbeat vulnerability aka Heartbleed and it gives you the CVE number. It also tells you that the machine is actually vulnerable from the information that it presents to you but it also tells you what version of TLS the machine is currently running. And so there's your warning and there's your information about whether or not the server is vulnerable. Now there are a number of these scripts available on the internet. This isn't the only one. They're posted all over the internet. All you have to do is just go to Google, type in download space heartbleed space script, or you can type in Python script, whatever you prefer. So if you'd like to learn more about the heartbleed vulnerability, please open up the lab file and read its contents. There's a lot of information in there about how this vulnerability actually works and why it's important for you to learn how to use this type of information and this technique for discovering whether or not you have a server with this vulnerability present. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about checking for Heartbleed Open SSL Exploit Vulnerability. You got questions, you got concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.